Hi, and welcome back to the channel today. Well, today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, I'm going to try to answer the number one question that I've been asked over the years since I've been making YouTube videos. And I, I just got another one of those questions on, on last week's video. Um, how do you get all of this done? How do you how do you do all of this stuff? I've got uh, a chicken coop that I built on the channel that I manage my chickens, I manage my garden, I manage the bees, I've got another bee yard. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take you through a day in the life of the bug farmer. You're going to spend the day with me and what we're going to be doing is I've got to mow the grass and clean up the bee yard first thing. I've got guests coming over at 9.30 this morning and it's uh, 7 o'clock now so I want to apologize for the sun. It's washing me out but I can't do anything about it. It's sunrise. But I've got guests coming over to go fishing at 9.30 this morning so they're going to be out there in the lake after I'm done hosting them. I've got to shoot a YouTube video down in the bee yard and then I've got to run over to the bee castle bee yard grab the buckets off of those hives, come back here, make 40 gallons of syrup, run it back over there, and put the buckets back on those hives and make sure that those girls are fed. Um, so that is my that is my day. Those are the tasks that I've got today. So I'm going to uh, invite you along to see what's, uh, what's going on in the day in the life of a bug farmer and let you see just how it is that I get all of this stuff done because this is pretty much my standard weekend day. Tomorrow I'm not going to be doing much because it is going to be raining. But, uh, but there you go, there you have it. Let me uh, get my mowers out and we'll get started. Oh, and a quick shout out to uh, McNally up there in Alberta, Canada. I saw that you were enjoying your Bug Farmer mug. I appreciate you showing it on your channel. Thanks a lot. All right, so now I've got my earbuds in. We're gonna put on some the soundtrack of the 80s, and then we're going to start cleaning the bee yard. I wish I could share my music with you, but yeah, copyright and all that other fun stuff. So I'll put some epidemic sound on there, and you'll uh, you'll have a great time watching me work really, really fast. I'm gonna just blast through this one. I mean, I'm gonna work fast, but it's gonna be really fast because I'm gonna speed up the, the video. I'll give you a nice song to listen to, maybe some rock and roll or something, I don't know. Me, I'm gonna start with uh, We All Die Young by Steel Dragon. Now that's not really 80s, but if you know, if you know, you know, right? It's from the movie Rockstar. You know, I'm just a regular guy who grew up with the posters of these guys on my walls. And now I'm one of them! If you've not seen the movie Rockstar with Mark Wahlberg, it's a great movie. But uh, I'll start with We All Die Young, and then we'll, we'll take it from there. Woo! All right, now the fun begins. All right, I managed to get out of there with only two stings. I've got a third bee chasing me right now, but I'm about to go blow off the driveway 
and then we're going to call the bee yard clean and then the fishing folks should show up i don't know what time it is right now we are on schedule it's nine o'clock they're gonna be here at 9 30. all right well it's 9 27 and i've got my first chores done of the day i've still got to host the fishing party that's coming at 9 30 so i've got to go change my shirt because i'm completely sweaty and soaking wet because it's like 99 percent humidity in georgia as it always is so I'm going to get the fishing party started, let them start their business, and then we're going to jump into a beehive and, and get that portion of the day done. We will make our video for next week. And then after that, it's off to the Bee Castle Bee Yard where we've got to feed the bees. All right, shower number one complete. Now it's time to host the guests, and then we will, then we will move over to the Bee Castle Bee Yard. All right, now it's time to make a video. And welcome back to the channel today well today we are going to pick up where we left off last time nice and easy no need to get your guards all riled up all right i'm done filming next week's video that's that's done i've got it all in these memory sticks and i've got to move it from the memory sticks onto my computer so that i can use the memory sticks to finish recording today's video um so there you go so i'm just gonna rest while i'm doing that it's very very hot i've already had two glasses of water i'm about to have another one and this is my this is my under veil look. I wear a wear a headband to keep the, the sweat from going in my eyes, which brings me to a rabbit hole that I'm going to send you down while I'm moving these 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 videos over to this computer. And that rabbit hole is as follows. Now, I don't know if you're as old as I am. I'm not gonna say how old I am. Maybe that's a you guys can guess in the comments. How old is the bug farmer? We'll see if I'll uh, see if anybody gets close. Um, but that's not that's not the rabbit hole. I mean, that could be a rabbit hole, but it's not the rabbit hole we're talking about. The rabbit hole that we're talking about has to do with a headband. So back in the 80s and maybe the 90s, uh, there was a guy named Richard Simmons. You may or may not have heard of him. You can Google him and, and look him up if you have. And he was an exercise guy. He helped a lot of people lose weight as we all eat a lot of high fructose corn syrup and, and turn into big fat fatties. Well, I'm trying to avoid the high fructose corn syrup because I have been a big fat fatty and still kind of am. I'm trying to, trying to work on that. That's not the point. The point is this, how many of you believe that Richard Simmons wore a headband? And how many of you believe that Richard Simmons did not wear a headband? I'm gonna let you stew on that for a second while I move these files, I'll let you think about it. I would say put the answer in the comments, but, but here's what I'm going to tell you. Richard Simmons never wore a headband. I know you think of Richard Simmons, you think headband. He never wore a headband. Now, that said, if you find a video or proof that Richard Simmons wore a headband, put it in the comments below. We'll take a look at it. We'll all look at it to see if you can find proof. But I'm telling you, he never wore a headband. And if you can prove me wrong, put it in the comments below. It's just a, just a rabbit hole that you can go down while, uh, while I'm moving video. So... The next thing that I've got to do after I'm done moving the video to this computer is I've got to make a emergency bucket of sugar syrup. I'm not going to tell you why, but I did just get done inspecting the, the bee yard out there and you'll see why next week. But uh, not everything is right with the world. We'll just we'll leave it at that. Not everything is right with the world. And I've got to make some, uh, some emergency feed for at least one of the hives down here. I probably should make feed for all of them based on something that I saw, but, uh, but there you go. One more of these, then I've got to make some sugar syrup and feed some bees, and then we are going to run to the bee castle yard and gather up all of those buckets, bring them back here, and then make a lot of syrup. All right, cooking with bug farmer. Actually just gonna make some one-to-one uh, -one sugar syrup, take it out, Feed those bees that are starving, and then we're going to head over to the uh, to the bee castle yard. Might 
be time for a ham sandwich. It is one o'clock. Got a lot done today. It's one o'clock. We've already mowed the yard, hosted a fishing party, uh, cleaned up the apiary, filmed a video, making some food. It's about time for a ham sandwich. Nobody said it was going to be easy or fun. A day in the life of bug farmer is hard. Work, work, work. I think this is bad. This is my Saturday. My Sunday, I spend the day editing videos. And then Monday, I go back to work at my job and film a video in the morning for Instagram and take pictures and post those with Instagram in the afternoons. And it's a lot of work. What I'm doing now is I'm heating up a kettle because the girls have propolized this screen on my bucket feeder. I've got to I've got to dump hot water through it, boiling water through it, so that it melts the propolis and allows the uh, the nectar to flow again. And then I'm going to show some of you who have never seen a bucket feeder or how it works, how the bucket feeder actually works. I've received that question uh, multiple times, and I also believe I got these bucket feeders at Better Bee. I will leave a link down in the uh, description where I purchased them. I might even, if I have time, create a QR code, put it on the screen. You can scan it with your phone, it'll take you right there. Um, and then you can get bucket feeders as well. I've got these one gallon bucket feeders for this bee yard and two gallon bucket feeders for the other bee yard. Um, and I love them. Internal feeding is the way to go in my opinion. But this melts any wax that they get on the screen, as well as propolis, it takes care of that too. Beautiful. Now it's going to work. So for those of you who don't know, let me show you how a bucket feeder works. We're going to fill it with water just for this demonstration. Now let's pretend that we have filled this up with, with sugar syrup. You put the lid on. Now you saw the screen that's in the middle. All you do is you tip it upside down when you're in the bee yard and now you see that uh, it created a vacuum on the inside. The bees will drink off of that screen as it sits on the hive and it should not leak. Shake it a couple times. It should not just leak in the hive. If it does leak it means you don't have the lid on tight but, uh, but that's how the bucket feeder works and they're very very cheap and it's a good way to get a lot of food into your hive quickly. All right this should be a half a gallon. make one more. Now last week I showed you my uh, my uh, Hysia boots. Wearing them again today. Ah, that wasn't an ad by the way. I wasn't paid to put that out there. I wasn't uh, asked to do that again. I just wanted to give you an update of the boots. I really really like these boots. These things are like, they feel like I'm wearing tennis shoes. Um, but they're boots and they're rugged and I love them. So I, I just wanted to show you and let you know that you could still save 15%. I'll put that Link down in the uh, description as well if you want to go out there and get yourself a pair of boots. Again, I'm not being paid to tell you this. They're just, they're good boots. And with 15% off, it's, it's cheap. And right now, if you're looking for a pair of boots, we can save all the money where we need to save all the money we can because uh, times, are a, times are a bit tough. Right. There we go. That is a full bucket of feed. Maybe a little bit left for the hummingbird. I'm going to run this out to the hive and then uh, we'll head over to Bee Castle after I eat. You're not going to watch me eat, but just know that by the time I'm on the way to Bee Castle, I'll have a ham and Swiss on rye in my belly. <laughs> All right, I'll be back. I just want to say, you know, ham and Swiss on rye. Let's talk a little bit about ham and Swiss on rye. I don't know whether you've ever had it. Eh, a lot of you probably have. I don't think there's a better sandwich out there. now. Of course, I like seeded rye, and I like using Miracle Whip, not mayonnaise. Sometimes mustard, sometimes without. But I think the key to the perfect ham and Swiss on rye is two things. One, after you've put the ham and Swiss in the rye together with the mayonnaise or Miracle Whip, if that's what you choose, as I do, um, nuke it for about 35 seconds. Get it nice and warm. Let that cheese melt. Yum. And the second key is have a tall glass of milk with it. Just a nice, it's almost like with peanut butter and jelly, you have to have milk. Ham and Swiss on rye, you've got to have a tall glass of milk. 
me, I'm a whole milk guy. I like the creamy stuff. A lot of folks lactose intolerant. You know, I mean, drink what you can. But uh, I'm just saying, my ham and Swiss on rye washes it down nicely with some milk. Nice seeded rye, too. I can't beat it. Anyways, uh, I'll see you when we get to the bee yard. Every time I come back here to this gate, it's like uh, Jurassic Park. Uh -huh. Because this gate is just a, uh, it's a monster gate for a monster fence. Hard to believe this was mowed just last week. It's already uh, getting tall again. And there they are. Hello, girls. All right, so you're only gonna see a little bit of this because yeah, I was in such a hurry to get out of the house, to get over here and get these buckets that I left my camera. So I'm gonna film this with my phone, which means the video quality is not gonna be that good. All I've got to do is abscond with the buckets. Not a big deal. We're just going to grab them really quick, throw them in the car, put the lid back on, and be done. Right, so I'm not sure how much of that you saw because when I got back to the car while I was removing the buckets the phone said that it overheated because it was sitting in the back window and well it's it's hot as Hades here and it's humid and it's just gross so so I can understand how it overheated and it may overheat now I've got a white cloth over the phone right now while I record this anyways well hive number eight no longer exists hive eight is gone Unfortunately, uh, they were robbed out and they were a very weak colony. I, I should have listened to the advice of the folks that were out there on the internet and, and put them in a, uh, in a nuke, maybe a two frame nuke or a three frame nuke and, and tried to nurse them back to health. But I, I didn't do that and, and they were robbed out and they're gone. And hive number 20 has been robbed out and they're gone. So I'm down to 18 hives in the Bee Castle Bee Yard. I've got uh, 18 queen right hives there right now, but two of them are kaput. So I think what I'm going to do, not today, because today I'm booked, but maybe next weekend if it's nice, I think I'm going to move Space Force and Coast Guard over here to this bee yard and, uh, and put them in the spot of Hive 8 and Hive 20. All right, let's make 40 gallons of sugar syrup. Now we are using the old licorice hose that, uh, that I showed you on the channel a couple of weeks ago, so let me give you an update. I've been using this thing quite a lot, and it's a good hose. Don't get me wrong, it's a fantastic hose. It does shrink, it does grow, but because it doesn't have the cloth on the outside, this thing tangles very easy. It's very, it's, it's sticky, it's grabby, it grabs onto itself, and uh, it knots up fairly easily. Good hose, I mean, it's very lightweight for a 100-foot hose, and it, it, it seems to be holding up. It's rugged, it's just grabby. Fifty pounds of sugar. Oh, goodness. Right, well, I can hear these bees humming now. 
I hate the fact that I've only got 18 hives now, but they're all queen right, so that's the good thing. I've made the decision I'm going to be bringing the Space Force and Coast Guard hive out here to replace 8 and 20. So we should be in good shape, and I'll continue to build these girls up until spring. Anyways, now it's time to give these girls the sugar syrup that I just made, and it's going to make them awfully happy, and it's going to at least let me sleep tonight, knowing that they've got some food. Well, there you go, the end of another adventure. And let me tell you, it was an adventure. I appreciate you stopping in to have a look at what, what the bug farmer does on a, on a Saturday. It's a lot, lot more than just inspecting a hive and shooting a video. I've got a lot to do. Pretty much every Saturday, it's rinse and repeat. I just go, go, go until I can't go anymore. And Sunday's not much better because Sunday I've got to edit the video that we shot today or the videos that we shot today. I actually shot two videos today. Um, and get that ready for Friday so that you can uh, sit back and watch me work some more. So there you go, and there you have it. Now, this did not turn out the way that I thought it was going to turn out. I knew I had to come here and feed the bees, but I did not know that I was going to come here and find two dead outs. I had uh, Hive 8 and Hive 20 were both robbed out. Some dead bees in the bottom. I had to clean off the bottom board, but they had, they had no food. Now, here's something interesting, and, and I'll take a look at it next week when I come out here. But Hive number 2 and Hive number 6, I believe, they have a bunch of bees up underneath of the hives and it doesn't look like a standard beard it may be the girls that were left in hive 8 and 20 maybe they absconded and landed underneath of those hives i don't know i'm not going to look today because quite honestly i don't have the equipment i've got to clean up all the equipment that i'm, I'm taking from here today like i said i did scrape off the bottom boards and those are going to sit in the sun and dry out and everything should be right with the world the smell should go away anyways so there you go and there you have it anyways hope you enjoyed this video if you did do me a favor give me a thumbs up if you have something to say by all means please leave a comment i love hearing from you and if you have not subscribed to the channel, do me a favor, take a moment, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell to be notified of my new content. I try to drop a video every Friday. We try to keep it light and have fun. So with all that said, be happy. And I will see you next week. Take care. Cheers, I'll see you next week.